welcome. We're live right now on the back of a research boat, a marine biology boat called the Callista. And we're actually here outside in sunny Plymouth. So today we're going to be looking at some really awesome undersea creatures and we've got some species guides that your teachers hopefully have given to you and if, if they haven't, tell them they're naughty and you need to ask for them. So what you've got is a little game you can play. Some of the species that we're going to be talking about are on your species guides and you get points for seeing the most rare ones when you watch some of the other videos. So if you let us know, send us a tweet, send us an email and we will um, hopefully see who is the winner. So today we're going to be looking at some, like I said, some really cool underwater species. Um, whilst we're looking, you need to look out for Thomas. Thomas is a very important member of the crew as he's the boat dog. So if you see him, let us know, send us a message and we'll get you to say hello to Thomas. So Thomas is not, Thomas a dog, it's quite exciting, but not as exciting as some of the things that we've been looking at under the sea here. And one of the unique and amazing things that we can do from the Callista is actually dive down to very deep depths, uh, many metres, uh, tens of metres under the waves and see some of the unique animals that are living there. We're using a really special uh, and important member of our team called Rex. Uh, the underwater mini robot submersible to actually uh, find some of that. So I think that Amber, is that right? We're going to go inside and look for some of those things. But before I do, one of the things we wanted to point out is it's really important if you want to email in uh, using the email addresses that you, we supplied you, uh, any questions during our live broadcast here and we will be able to answer those uh, as we go. Cool, so if we head inside now, we're just going to go and see Nick and our underwater robot Rex. Hey Nick, how's it going? Hi Adrian, very good. We're just stopped here having a look at this little crab who's hiding from us. Um, he's just under this ledge here. Fantastic. So where we are right now is we're at what we call the remotely operated vehicle control station. Now that sounds like a lot of words, but actually this is a, a place where we can control our little submarine uh, called Rex from here inside the boat. And right now, 20 meters below us, that's uh, the height of five double-decker buses, our little robot is driving around, controlled here by my colleague Nick, uh, looking for sea creatures on the seabed. And we're able to film them uh, and actually uh, collect some of them as well when we want to collect them and look at them and we'll show you some of that a bit later on. Nick, what are we... So, oh, there's <coughs> a crab just coming out now. Oh. We can actually, why don't we just... Uh, oh, you can just see him here. Oh, he's just, oh, just tucked his claws back in. So I'll explain what you're looking at here. We're actually live right now for about 20 meters uh, right underneath the boat that's again five double-decker buses really quite deep down there's very little light so all of the things that you can see are illuminated by the cameras on Rex and we've got up here hopefully you can see in my hand that's a little nudibranch uh, it's a really uh, beautiful animal uh, so related to snails and slugs that you know on land actually crawling around and there's a lot of plankton all swirling around in the water here because it's actually quite a uh, a large amount of, uh, uh, of, uh, of organisms in the water column as well as here on the seabed down in the muddy depths and a minute ago we had a crab who just walked past but he's just disappeared right now so Nick do you want to uh, just try taking off yeah let's sure, go gonna... let's uh, cut across here to Nick uh, and watch him fly the ROV you can explain a little bit about what you can see on the oh. controls up here as well yeah there? sure so this is uh, my two screens that I use for, for steering so I'm gonna ease off on the thrusters here and try and come up off the seabed a bit so here we are and that's just and now flying around it's quite underwater. Hard, isn't it? oh and there's Whoop. a little sea squirt and in the distance are some white anemones I can see um, just having a look at this little rocky area looking around for some life on the seabed I've got my compass just down here telling me which direction I'm going in so I know where I'm heading um, this tells me how deep I am in the water so I know how far away I am and Nick how do you see so obviously it's quite hard to see here at the moment yeah. uh, because all the murk how would you is there anything that on wrecks that you can use to to see a bit further uh, uh, into the beyond just those few meters just in front of your lens well we've got we've got our lights which I can turn those up a notch um, Why don't you try so switching the lights around. off and then we can actually and see how we, dark it is down there. You can show turn everybody. the lights off, Whoa. <laughs> that's completely dark. So then I turn the lights back on a little bit 
and you can just see all the mud. But also, you can't. See, oh, here's a Whoa, giant crab. There's a big crab. Wow, that's cool. Here's a spider, oh, it's a spider crab, crab. That we're just coming up on. Fantastic. Oh, and I'm just stirring up a bit too much mud against the current here. He's disappeared. Let's see if we can find him again. There he is. Oh. I think so, I can see one of his tent his claws there. There's lots of fine mud around here. Was thrust forward very gently. Oh, very gently. Him. Yeah. Oh. Let's try and go around a bit and see if we can. While you're trying to find the, um, while tr Nick tries to find the uh, crab, I'll just explain what's going on over here. Uh, this is a what's called a sonar. So one way you can look underwater and see further is using sound waves. And you can see here this sweeping green line is actually looking in front of the ROV and picking up uh, objects on the seabed to up to 20 meters away. And that allows us to find things uh, that are a bit hard to see in the murky waters in where we are now, which is in Plymouth Sound. Uh, sometimes it's quite clear water, but at the moment the tide is running uh, and that brings a lot of muddy particles into the ocean. So Nick, what's uh, what's the most exciting thing that you've ever found with Rex, uh, the ROV? Oh, I think once when we were in, uh, in the Bahamas in a deep sea canyon, we had a massive sailfish come up and it's really colorful. It has this big purple sail fin that it sticks up in the water when it's interested in it. Took a good look at us and it was just beautiful to see. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, so sometimes we're able to take, take Rex uh, out on expeditions uh, beyond the, the coast of Britain and actually out anywhere in the world. It's small enough to be able to take it away uh, on an aeroplane and actually deploy from really small boats. Uh, Nick and I even deployed it off on the, uh, the back of a, a small Jeep into one of the <laughs> amazing blue holes of the Bahamas one time. And that must have been one of the highlights that I've ever had piloting Rex. Have you found the crab, Nick? We'll come no, back a bit later yeah. and see if you found him. Still having a look around. So one right exciting away. thing we do want to say is there's loads of other videos on our Rov Rex YouTube that you're watching us on now. There's a really cool video of a shark in the Bahamas that Rex filmed. Uh, so take a look at that one. And there's a really good dive on a place called Eddystone Reef, uh, Eddystone Reef and it's number 88. And the species guide you've got, that'll be a really good dive that you can do your um, game with, with the points. So take a look and let us know how many points you get. So I think we're going to head out and see some of our equipment now, some of our outdoor That's right, equipment. Anna, yeah, let's head outside and uh, we'll explain a little bit about how we actually take samples uh, using wrecks and using other equipment uh, from the seafloor and bring them up to the surface so we can study them. Okay. So we're now back out on the back deck of the Callista. Uh, and one of the things that we can do with wrecks is get up close and find things uh, that we want to sample and then go there and actually take those grab samples uh, with another device which can take more things up to the surface because it's really really important for us to be able to see things, uh, get our hands on them, identify them and try and work out what species they are, species they are just as some of you are hopefully doing with the, the videos uh, that we've got on the archive. Uh, so right over here, I'll just take you down and explain this. This is uh, one of the main tools that we can use and it's called a, a grab sampler. It's actually quite simple, lower to the seafloor uh, using this chain here. Uh, and when it reaches the seafloor, these arms close, uh, grab a big sample of mud and anything that's on the seafloor, and then we can bring it up to the surface. And this actually is one of the really fun things to do as a marine biologist is to get samples and to bring back, and what's often uh, we bring back is a lot of mud. Uh, and that means we have to process that mud, we have to deal with the mud and all the animals that it contains out here in the back deck. And doing that uh, is quite good fun. It involves things like here, Amber, have you got a sieve? Yeah, so this is our sieving platform. Um, basically, you have sieves with lots of different size holes in and they catch different size animals. And when we put the, all the animals and the specimens on here, we get a massive hose and loads of mud and we wash it all through, we use our hands, we get really muddy. So when we do this, we have to wear some very strange clothes, which we'll show you now. They're very bright, so if we take you over here, we have Chiho and we have Chris. And Chiho and Chris are in their very bright, attractive uh, oil skins. So the good thing about oil skins is that when you get mud on water on them, it runs straight off. So I'm gonna stand out the way because I'm not in any. <laughs> oh no, I'm covered anyway. <laughs> but it runs straight off them. So all their clothes underneath are completely dry. Well, we might have put some holes in them to make them wet, but you never know. 
Okay, I quite enjoyed that. Uh, so <laughs> next up, uh, we're going to go and have a look at some of the animals that we bring up and we've collected on those sieves and what we do with them after that. And actually, this is actually in some ways the most exciting part of all, is that we go in and we look at them using something called a microscope. And in fact, if you just follow me backwards here, uh, we can have a look in the microscope lab. Uh, so welcome, uh, the microscope, oh my goodness me. We have got on the screen here something fantastic. Helena, who's with us, maybe we want to introduce Helena. Uh, so Helena is here looking at the microscope. Hello. Uh, looking at some of these tiny animals. So Helena, uh, tell us a little bit about what you found here. Yeah, so this is a worm from the sea floor. So this one lives about 20, 30 meters down in the sediment. And even though it doesn't look like it, it is quite closely related to earthworms. And this one is, is a a species that is called Eupolymnia nebulosa, quite a fancy name, but it is quite beautiful, don't you think? It's not very big, as you can see in the petri dish. Can you... Here's my oh, finger yeah, for scale, can... so it's oh, not wow, very that's big. Tiny. Yeah, but they're beautiful, tiny and beautiful. So, is it really difficult doing uh, really fiddly work like this all the time on the boat? Oh yes, it is. When, when we have bad sea, when we have high waves, it's really, really tricky, both to look down in the microscope and also to keep everything in place. So we have to tie everything down very carefully so it doesn't fall over when, when a big wave hits us or something. Cool, so we've That's actually amazing. got um, a few questions come in that we're going to answer now. So if we head back outside, um, we'll answer some of your questions. So if you want to follow me. Okay, so our first um, question um, is um, what type of starfish are in the dancing starfish video? So I think this is the one of the Ophiuroid beds that we saw um, a couple of years ago and that is in Plymouth as well. What they're called are brittle stars because they have really thin spindly legs and no one had ever discovered that before. No one knew that those starfish were living there. And you just put wrecks down, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right, Amber. What we, what we did, we were quite lucky. We took some grab samples. We are actually collecting all new grab samples. We put wrecks down. We found what's called a brittle star bed. These are these really unique, uh, interesting little uh, uh, environments you get where these brittle stars are waving their arms like this. And what's fas fascinating is what they're actually doing is feeding. They're, they're basically drawing food out of the water column. Uh, down into their tummies uh, and there are many many hundreds maybe thousands of them just in that one area that was one of the, the really exciting discoveries we had from uh, a year or two ago cool so that was a school in Plymouth the school of creation so thanks for that question so it's called a brittle star and if you want to be really fancy and impress everyone it's an ophiroid cool so we actually have to say hello to, uh, to someone it's Morgan Stringer from Plymouth School of Creative Arts as he's poorly today um, and is watching at home. So we're sorry you're not feeling very well, but we hope you're feeling better after seeing all the cool sea animals. Get well soon, Morgan. Okay, so we've got another question from the Bishop's School in Newquay, um, and that's from Tom Khan, uh, class, and Finn asks, what life do you expect to find in the water? So what's, what's, what's different about the life we're finding here um, as opposed to maybe what we find in other areas? Why is it special in the water in Plymouth? So where we are right now on the border of Devon and Cornwall, uh, the southwest corner of Britain, uh, the, 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 the island of Britain, is one of the most amazing places to look for marine life. And it's like probably one of the places where there are more animals on the sea floor than anywhere else around the United Kingdom. And it's particular, so it's what we call a, a hotspot uh, of a really long word called biodiversity. And biodiversity means just a number of different types of animals, different types of species uh, in one area. And this is one of the really special places for that. So one of the really, like one of the main species that we really look for when we're here is called the pink sea fan, and it's a type of coral, and it's very bright pink. And in that, in one of the dives on the YouTube, you'll see loads of these beautiful pink sea fans, and it's in your species guide as well. What's really important about these um, corals is they're not just one animal, they're not one big animal, they're thousands of tiny animals all living together in what's called a colony and they're loads of tiny animals called polyps and they have tentacles so if you see them when you look at the video they're all waving their tentacles and that's why they look so fluffy but the really important thing about these species is they're protected by the law in the UK and that is because they make a habitat for loads and loads of other animals so 
So baby fish, they live in the branches of the corals and they hide there from big predators that are trying to be nasty and eat them. And you also get lots of species like worms and crabs and anemones that live on there as well. So they can be higher in the, in the water and they can catch all the food with their tentacles and steal it from the coral. So that's why we protect those species. So if you see them in the dives, they're very, very special animals. Okay, we've got another question. Any um, more questions, yeah. Yeah, we've got um, Ellie is asking, hello Ellie, um, Hi, what's Ellie. the purpose of putting the robot under the sea? So I think we're gonna have a chat with Chris about that. Chris, because yeah. um, you scuba dive, don't you? Um, so why why do we have to put Rex the robot down instead of sending you down in your scuba diving gear? Well, scuba diving is really good around Plymouth. Um, the water is very clear, there's loads of animals there, but of course you're constrained by the amount of air that you can have in your tank. And that means that after a while, you actually have to come up to the surface. And the great thing about Rex is that Rex doesn't breathe air, so Rex can stay down a long time on the sea floor. And also another thing about Rex as well is Rex can dive quite deep. So uh, Rex can dive to tens of meters deep more than I could dive as a scuba diver. So Rex can stay down longer, can go deeper, and also Rex has got a much better camera than my own eyes. So Rex can actually zoom in to the tiny little creatures, which are really difficult to see. Awesome, thanks Chris. So hopefully we get some more questions and we'll answer any others that come through later. Don't worry, we will answer all the questions. Uh, Amber, we might also have time to pop back in and see if Nick's found that spider crab in it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, we'll perhaps, hopefully. Uh, perhaps at the end, yeah. Yeah, we'll have a look, see if we can hunt down the spider crab for you. So one thing that we do as scientists is we all really specialise in certain areas because the sea takes up such a huge part of our oceans. Um, it's most of our world and so we all have to specialise in really specific areas so that we understand them and become experts. So Adrian, what, what's your specialist area? What are you an expert on? Well, one of the things that I'm working on at the moment, Amber, is really studying how animals in the deep ocean, and that's deep, uh, really, really deep sea, get their food. How deep is really deep though, Adrian? Well, the average depth of the oceans is three and a half thousand meters. Oh my goodness. So at the moment we're working, Rex is right now underneath us at about 20 meters depth. Uh, if we went out to sea, maybe to the middle of the English Channel, we'd maybe get to about 100 meters depth. Uh, but actually that's just a small fraction uh, of really uh, what most of the oceans are, which is a really, really deep sea. Uh, with Rex is only capable of going to sort of 100 to 200 meters to get those really deep depths. We use bigger ROVs, bigger robot submarines. And one of the things that we're working on is how those animals in the very deep sea get their food. So what we're doing here right now is conducting an experiment. Actually, right, right underneath us, we have the uh, system down, looking at exactly that. We put down some very special experimental things to see how animals here uh, actually feed. And right here, you've got an example of those. And these are. Uh, pieces of wood, uh, I don't know how well you, you can still see this, but we're actually looking at a piece of wood which we brought up uh, from the seafloor yesterday and it's covered in animals. These are still alive. I'm just going to put my finger in here and show hopefully you can see some of these uh, little animals which are boring into the wood and consuming it. And what, we were, what we're working out is that not only uh, are there animals in the wood here uh, which are actually consuming it and getting and their energy from the wood. We also found species which are entirely new to science are actually living uh, in those in those things. And right next to this bucket, uh, we have something else really amazing. I don't know how well you can see this, but there is a whale bone in here, uh, and that is a quite a smelly bucket. Uh, it's one of the smelliest buckets that we've got on the boat. It does smell quite bad. Yeah. Uh, and whale bones. This is a, a whale bone that we we had in the collection in the Natural History Museum that we actually put down as an experimental uh, package uh, to see what would colonise and eat it. And just a few years ago, we found a species entirely new to science called Ossidax. Wow. Uh, growing on the whale bones. It was really, really remarkable. We're looking out and a little bit later on, we're gonna be looking over this bone to see if we can find any of those. I noticed just now, Adrian, that you said that they were boring animals. I mean, you can't think they're not interesting. Uh, what did you mean by boring? Yes, that's boring as in making a hole in these things oh. on the seafloor. So <laughs> boring as in boring a hole, not boring as in we don't find them interesting. Oh, well that's I good I find then. them fascinating. And in fact, these, these animals, Ocidax in particular, uh, it's actually the name, it sounds a bit weird, but it's actually Latin for bone eating. 
uh, and we, we found them and now we know there's over 20 or maybe even 30 species of them all around the ocean that actually consume the bones of dead whales on the seafloor after they've landed there. That's something that we had no idea about until uh, just a few years ago when we started doing these experiments. So they're bone-eating zombie worms, basically. That's that's what some people call them, yes. So they're, they're fascinating, but also kind of disgusting. They, they are a bit uh, off-putting initially, mm. uh, but once you start to learn about their biology, you find that these things are really, really exciting and raise all kinds of questions about how animals have evolved to adapt to different types of environments, and particularly uh, those in the marine system that we knew very, very little about, and we only discovered quite relatively recently. That's really cool. So we're still finding loads of species that we don't know about in the oceans. Even so we need to keep looking. Even in places like here, uh, close to home, there are species which we find which are new to science. Elena, who we were just talking to, has described new species of very small worms uh, from the North Sea, from the habitats just around uh, the British coast. So we, we, it's, it's really remarkable. But as you go into the very deep water, that the number of new things you find, the new species, does increase. Uh, but here, uh, where we're working in shallow water, if we look at small animals, particularly things living inside these unusual uh, structures, bones and pieces of wood on the seabed, we still find new things. Yeah, it's funny you say that. We, I was on a cruise last week and someone's discovered two new anemones just uh, when we incredible. sent the yeah. ROV down then as well. So, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. So, that's why we do our jobs. <laughs> Fantastic. So, next... We, any more um, questions or should we...? Yeah, we've got some more questions. Um, we have got a question from Isaac and Leo. Hello. Um, did you build the road what yourselves? Oh, that's a good... No, we didn't. No, we, we bought it. Uh, so, yeah, very good question. So we bought a little robot, but what we have done is we've, we've customised it. So we've added all kinds of things to it to ourselves. And we've also invented a whole new way of deploying it off the ship. Because most of these little robots are actually built for other kinds of work. For example, just working in a harbour, inspecting the bottom of a boat or the, the underneath of a, of a pontoon to check uh, if it's okay or not. We've adapted it to be able to, with a really amazing camera uh, and other features including a little manipulator arm that allow us to actually take samples uh, and do all kinds of marine biology experiments. So uh, it, it, we didn't build it entirely ourselves, although sometimes it feels like I am building it from scratch when, we, <laughs> when it goes wrong and we have to take it to pieces. Yeah, we've uh, had that a couple it, of times. Yes, always every, always every other time, yes. Yeah. It's a character. Yeah. Um, so yeah, another question, question about uh, Rex the robot. Um, I haven't got a name for this, sorry, but I hope you know it's your question. Um, how long does the robot stay in the water? Right, well, that's a really good question actually, an excellent question. One of the amazing things about Rex is it can stay down as long as we want. So as long as we provide power, electricity from the ship down the long cable, uh, which feeds Rex its, its, its electricity and sends the video back up to the surface, we can stay down as long as we want. And I think Chris earlier mentioned that uh, one of the issues with scuba diving is that you're limited to really uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes uh, on the seafloor, which doesn't give you very much time to do anything. And the other thing with a little robot like that is that uh, it sends a video back here and we can all watch it. So we can all sit in the lab as long as we want, uh, drinking our cups of tea, watching uh, Rex uh, dive around and actually make observations of underwater life uh, right there. So yeah, it's a really, really good question. I think we've got some more questions, is that right? Oh, that, I've just found out where that question came from, actually. That was from Trevigulous Community College. And actually, that's my old school, so hello, everyone. Fabulous. Thanks, yeah. guys. Um, cool, so um, another question. Uh, what if Rex stops working? What do we do right. then? Yes, we, well, we've had that happen it's a few times. Hard. Very good question. Uh, Rex, uh, Rex is quite tough. Uh, he's had a lot of adventures. We've had 115 dives. In fact, right now, Rex is on the seafloor. Is Rex still working? Yep, I can see. I can see film on the camera, so we're still going on dive 116. Uh, but just occasionally it loses power, and if that happens, it floats back to the surface and we can recover it. Um, sometimes uh, it might get entangled in things on the seabed, in which case we have to try and figure out how to free it. And we've managed that sometimes, and other times we have actually lost little bits of it, got caught in fishing nets. Uh, but Rex is still going strong, um, and we're, we're pretty confident uh, we'll be able to get quite a few more dives out of him yet. Cool, so that was from Daisy and Rosie, so cool question, thanks guys. Um, how far from the boat can Rex actually go, Adrian? Yeah, good question. So we have 200 metres, so we have 200 metres of cable. Uh, so we can go in any direction from the boat uh, in 200 metres. Uh, so straight down, we can go to 200 metres deep if we wanted. And actually, wow. Nick and I, um, in the Bahamas, we dived to 170 metres wow. uh, below the sea, below, below the boat, uh, right over the Great Bahama Canyon. 
Uh, that was very exciting. In the middle of the night. Was there any light there at all? No light, no, no. We actually did it at night because we were trying <gasps> to attract uh, animals in the sea, in the, in the water column, uh, to our lights. Uh, and it was really spectacular. We had jellyfish coming around. Wow. Uh, and the most exciting moment, I think Nick mentioned it earlier when we chatted to him, was we had this big sailfish come past the camera and actually a shark as well. Uh, so some some of the some of the video uh, that we might you might find on the YouTube channel would include uh, include that. So. Oh, cool! Have a look, guys. Um, George at St Mary's in Bodmin. Um, I hope that Adrian answered your question just now about the number of new species that are being discovered um, with Rex. So we hope that was answered. So we're not ignoring you. Don't worry. I could chip in one thing there. Yeah. Every every year, there's over a thousand new species described from the ocean. It's an amazing thing that you wouldn't realise that. There's that many new animals that people have never seen before. And that's because it's so hard to get under the water to find things. And that's what I'm doing and Helena, who you were, we were chatting with earlier, are doing it, trying to describe those animals uh, and use all kinds of modern methods to, to actually understand them. Cool, and final question that we've got so far. Um, it's not about Rex, I don't think, in particular. Oh, here, what? here's uh, Thomas oh, the dog is here. Thomas! We should, he should have a starring role. Thomas, come on! Oh, he's interested in the mud grab more than us. Oh, hello! Well done. Yeah. yeah, he's a, a good classic uh, boat dog. dog. Ship yep. dog. Yeah. He knows Excellent. probably more than we do. Um, so yeah, the question is, and I think we could all probably chip in on this, is uh, what's the strangest thing you've seen, not just with Rex, but ever in the deep sea? The strangest thing? Uh, oh, that's a difficult one. It's quite a difficult question, isn't it? Yes. I wonder, uh, well, one of the, one really strange thing I remember when we were in the Bahamas, and we were going basically just off the edge of uh, a deep canyon. So we were going, we were about 50 meters below the sea, so about twice as deep as we are in that diving right now. And clustered all over the edge of that canyon wall were hundreds and hundreds of lionfish, these amazing, spectacular animals. And there's some video, if you hunt around on the YouTube channel, you'll be able to find some of that video. And all of these lionfish just clustered around the edge of that canyon, very, very strange. Uh, and I don't really understand what they were doing. Uh, but one of the things we do know about lionfish in the in the Caribbean is that they're an invasive species, and they're coming. Ah, Nick's just shouted to say he's found the crab. Oh! So we, why don't we just quickly come in? How much time have we got left, Amber? We've got a few minutes. A few minutes. Okay, follow me. People can turn off if you want to go, but if you want to stay with us and see some cool stuff, follow us. So we, he's just gone behind this big clump of seaweed here. So we're live now on the seafloor. Oh, that's a nice picture, Nick. Yeah. This so is here you've got some hydroids growing, we've got other animals, there's some worms growing on that seaweed right there. And uh, on top there's actually oh. a feather star which is related to a yep. sea star. There's a feather star there. I think so. at, the, at the bottom here as well we've got some eggs of tiny little animals as well, so that's oh, quite cool. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully they'll grow up soon because it's a lot of the time when so we've the, got a lot of baby animals around at the moment is, growing up. The crab is a little bit camera shy right now. Shall we see if we can go around? Yeah, yeah. come on Nick. Come okay, well, let's have an explore Nick. Explore exploration okay we're taking off so nick's using the thrusters to thrust up which way all the mud is appearing he's driving well, there we go we're in the we're now just a few meet, a few feet to sort of above the seabed so one of the other problems oh. that we were having oh it, there's something uh, behind there i saw something yeah let's yep. just settle and see if we can oh it looks like a big soup doesn't it soup wow. of mud just wait for plankton. the mud to clear away so one of the problems, Adrian, is that it's so, the current is really strong right now because of the tide. So we can only sort of go in certain directions. Is there anything left? Well, we may have to keep an eye out for Mr. Crab. Okay. Uh, well, it was a spider crab, wasn't it? That was yeah. behind there. Should we go back out onto the back deck? We'll see if we can, uh, and if we get if we get a nice shot of, oh, we've got a nice shot of, oh, ah, there's a, oh, wow. yeah, they're, um, there's a, there's, they're what there's a Pumos and enemy, yeah. is it? Uh, Let's have a look. So this is one of the mooring lines that's coming off the, ooh, yeah. Yeah, so lots of lovely anemones here, and you can see them all feeding with all their tentacles out, so. That's how they get all these particles that you can see floating about in the water column. They get their tentacles and they put them into their mouth. And a nice disgusting fact for you is that their, uh, their mouth is also their bottom. So, uh, you know, multi-purpose anemones, these are. Fantastic. Well, I guess we'll, our time's almost up, isn't it, Amber? So yeah, I think so. We've we got a couple out? more questions. Couple Make more sure questions. we answer everyone's questions before we finish. Let's pop out onto the back deck. Past Helena and the Worm Lab. 
So this is actually another question from my old school, Triviglas, so cheers guys. Uh, does, Ma does Rex manoeuvre himself about in the sea, or is that what Nick's there for? Exactly, and that's yeah. Jasmine, so, by the way. That's a really good question, Jasmine. Yeah, that's right. Nick is actually piloting Rex, and he's pushing on little joysticks, which control propellers on Rex, which allow it to move forwards, backwards, and left and right and actually up and down as well. It's quite difficult uh, flying Rex. It's a bit like flying an aeroplane, a sort of model aeroplane uh, remotely. Uh, behind you, so yeah, that's quite a challenge, but a good question. So that's why you've got to have lots of very experienced uh, robot pilots. That's right. Especially exactly. for the really big ones you get so as Nick well. Nick and I have been doing this now for quite a number of years, so we're getting better at it, uh, but it's still really quite challenging. Some of the robots you can get can be the size of like a car that your family drives. So yeah, you have to have many years of experience to drive those. So, you know, maybe one day we'll do that. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, cool. I think that's all what we've actually got time for today. I think so, um, yeah. We don't want to hold you up any longer, but we hope you enjoyed our Deep Discovery 2016 here in Plymouth. Um, and yeah, hopefully we can see you next year. We're going to try and do this again in 2017. We are broadcasting again tomorrow. There might be some different species. So if another class wants to join us, tell all your mates. Tell them to nag their teachers and get them to tune in tomorrow at half past one. So, yeah, bye from me. Yes, and bye from me. Thank you very much for joining. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.